Hey, what's up guys? This is the Linksys Atlas Max 6E tri-band mesh Wi-Fi system. So I'm gonna unbox this thing, I'm going to do some speed tests and wired and wireless backhaul, and I'm going to do some range tests on this thing to see how far it can actually go. So this one covers up to 6,000 square feet because it's the two pack, and it has, it can take up to 130 plus devices, and has a pretty fast, actually very fast speed rating of AXE 8400. So what is a mesh Wi-Fi and how does it work? Well, a mesh Wi-Fi is really designed to replace your router because it really is a router. It's really two or more devices that work together to create a single larger network. So I essentially connect to my Wi-Fi name, my SSID. If I'm closer to this room, it connects me to this one to give me the optimal Wi-Fi speeds. And then when I walk throughout the home and I get closer to this one, it will switch me over to this guy to continue giving me optimal Wi-Fi performance. So it's really a Wi-Fi dead zone killer, a network enhancer. That's essentially what a mesh Wi-Fi does where one of them acts as the router. So these things are fairly large. Let's look at the ports. So we have a USB 3.0 port, we have four gigabit ports, and we have one for the internet that can go up to five gigabits per second, and we have our power at 12 volts. So and it looks like some cooling. Overall, it has a pretty cool design, I would say. And on the bottom, we have a on-off switch, a WPS button, and a reset button. This one should also be a router. Granted, the secondary one always acts as a node or an extender or a satellite or an access point, however you want to call it. Essentially, the same ports. And let's see what else it comes with. Okay, so some fairly large power plugs. And this is 100 to 240 volts, so it should pretty much work in a lot of places. This regular style down plug, same thing here. And we have, does not tell us, but I'm sure this is at least cat 5 e to support gigabit. And what to do, what the lights mean, and Linksys, so a bit more of a manual and stuff. All right, so let's pretty much hook this thing up and go from there. It's been three weeks since I've unboxed this thing and I've been using it nonstop and so far so good. So no drops, nothing abnormal, everything's been solid. So I did all the speed tests, both in wired and wireless backhaul. I have all the numbers here. I also did the range test, which this one did fairly well. So for my devices, I used the Wi-Fi 6 device was the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And because this is a 60 mesh Wi-Fi, I used the Pixel 6 Pro and the Galaxy S21 Ultra. So both of these are Wi-Fi 6E compatible devices and they're pretty similar to each other in speeds. So I'm basically just gonna give you guys the Pixel 6 Pro numbers, but essentially they're very similar to the Galaxy S21 Ultra. So I still have it hooked up right now and I'm going to do a local speed test server, which basically what it does is it goes from phone to router to my computer, which is acting as a server. So this way we pretty much omit the internet to get the fastest possible speeds, essentially isolating the router. So you guys could see here that, okay, so we got 1791 down, which is pretty fast, and we're getting right around 1700 up, which is pretty similar to the numbers I wrote down. So you could see how fast Wi-Fi 6E is. It, it's truly very, very fast. Now that I've disconnected these, let's get started with the internet speed test. So in this case, I use my phones and I use the speed test app and I use them one at a time and I essentially run a speed test via my internet and I get these specific numbers. But before I give you guys the numbers, real quick, no matter how fast this mesh Wi-Fi or, or this router is, when I'm accessing the internet, I'm limited by my internet speeds, whatever my ISP or internet service provider is providing me with. So if this router or mesh Wi-Fi was slower than that, then I would be bottlenecked by the router itself. But because this thing can go faster than my internet speed specifically, I am being bottlenecked by my ISP when I'm accessing the internet. So. In this case, my internet speeds are 940 megabits per second download and 880 megabits per second upload. So 
when I do a speed test using my computer that's hooked up via Ethernet with the speed test app, I typically get those full speeds. However, with the Wi-Fi devices, that's a different story. So, with the iPhone 13 Pro Max, which is my Wi-Fi 6 device, I got 596 megabits per second download and 391 megabits per second upload. So all the numbers I give you guys are gonna be in megabits per second, not to be confused by megabytes per second. So one byte is equal to eight bits. That's the conversion rate. Okay, but the Pixel 6 Pro did better, at least for download speeds. I got 836 down and 279 up. So these are using pure internet speeds with the speed test app. Now, to actually isolate the router and to more accurately do the test, it's actually better if I do a local speed test, which I mentioned earlier, where I make my computer into a speed test server, and I essentially go from phone to router to computer, essentially isolating the router. So in this case, I'm essentially going as fast as the router can go. So I'm gonna use the same numbering scheme as I've done with all my other previous mesh Wi-Fi's. Option number one is when you use a single router by itself. So just because I get a two pack doesn't actually mean I need to use both. So I hook this up to my internet and I have four ports that I can hook up stuff. If I need more ports, I hook it up to an unmanaged switch. And in another video, I'll actually show you guys how to do all the connections. When I do the speed test, I get 895 down, 699 up with the Wi-Fi 6 device. And with the Wi-Fi 6C device was 1,777 down and 1680 up. It's crazy how much faster Wi-Fi 6C is compared to Wi-Fi 6. It, it's faster than gigabit speeds on wireless, which is phenomenal. Okay, so I'm gonna skip option number two because option number two, I usually save that when I have a router and a dedicated non-router device. Now moving to option number three, this is called wired backhaul or ethernet backhaul. And essentially what that means is this guy sucked up to the modem with this main WAN port and one of, one of the four ports, one of them, anyone you want, doesn't matter. You run an ethernet from one all the way to this other one to the five gigabits per second, the WAN port on this guy. And that essentially gives this guy a very strong, stable connection. And you can even go farther away because you're using ethernet. However, there is a caveat here where even though this main one, it supports five gigabits per second, these four only support gigabit speed. So because you're going from gigabit to five gigabits per second here, you're actually limited by the gigabit speeds on the secondary one. So no matter how fast your devices are, you're gonna, when you're doing a speed test closer to this one, which is what I did, you're going to be, you're pretty much gonna be capped out at gigabit speeds. Now, in most cases, for most people, this should be fine, but if you have faster internet speeds than gigabit, and you're trying to get faster one on the secondary one, then just know that you're gonna be limited to gigabit on the secondary one if you run an ethernet cable between them. With the Wi-Fi 6 device, with the iPhone 13 Pro Max, I got 903 down, 708 up. And with the Wi-Fi 6E device, this is where it was apparent that I got 960 down and 960 up. So essentially, you could see that now the Wi-Fi 6E, even though it's fast, very fast, it can't quite go to its crazy fast, you know, 1.7, 1.8, that it was doing in option number one when I was closer to this main one. Jumping to option number four, that's called wireless backhaul, which is actually very similar to wired backhaul, except you remove the ethernet between these two guys. So this one's still hooked up to your modem, still good to go. This one is around two rooms away and hooked up to the power and then wirelessly talks to this one, again, creating that mesh network, expanding your Wi-Fi coverage. So in this case, this system actually did very well. So with the, but there is a caveat. So with the Wi-Fi 6 device, I got 897 down, 717 up, which is very, very good. That's essentially, that essentially means there's no difference between wired and wireless backhaul, which is phenomenal. However, the caveat is, I think because it is using the six gigahertz band as the backhaul channel, when I do a speed test with the Pixel 6 Pro or the Samsung, because I'm connected to the Wi-Fi 6E, the six gigahertz band, 
I actually get much slower speeds. I got 646 down and 612 up, which was weird because, I mean, I guess it's not weird because it is using that and now I'm jumping to the six gigahertz band and I'm trying to get faster speeds, but it's actually, you know, reserving part of that so these guys can talk to each other. So it does make sense that it was slower, but here's the funny thing. As soon as I connected the Pixel 6 Pro to the five gigahertz channel, which is the same as the Wi-Fi 6 as the iPhone was connected to, I actually got really good speeds. I got 973 down and 982 up. Range test time. So range will actually vary based on location, meaning you know if you're in between floors, if you have a lot of thick walls, if you're in a building with a lot of other routers around, all of that stuff can hurt your range. So Linksys advertises this thing up to 6,000 square feet for two units, and I could say that, yeah, I can believe that for these two based on the range that I got. At 20 feet away, both the Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 60 devices got pretty good speeds. This is when I'm inside the house. At 50 feet away, this is when I go outside the house, and you could see that there's a drastic drop, especially for the Wi-Fi 6E device, because there are some walls now, I am outside, and one very important thing to note, the Wi-Fi 6C works on the 6 gigahertz band. Even though the 6 gigahertz band can be very fast, it just doesn't have quite the range of 5 gigahertz, especially of 2 to 2.4 gigahertz. So as a result, you'll see that starting at 50 feet, both the Wi-Fi 6 and the Wi-Fi 6E devices are very similar to each other in terms of speed because the Wi-Fi 6E is actually connected to the Wi-Fi 6 to the 5 gigahertz band. This thing goes all the way up to 350 feet, which is insane. However, starting at around, you know, 180 feet, the speeds really just became a lot slower. I mean, it was working, it was still fine, it was still good. The fact that I can go that far and still get speeds is very, very good. And again, this is the best range that I've tested, but after that point, it, it's honestly just slow and slow and slow and slow because it's on the 2.4 gigahertz and it's just slow. Now, when I compare this to the ORB and the ET8, we'll kind of jump in and talk more about it and the differences and stuff, but technically speaking, this did give me the most range at 350 feet, which honestly is ridiculous. So I do believe it when they say it can reach up to 6,000 square feet. Okay, now in terms of the app, I have to say that it's a pretty clean app. You don't have too many options with this thing, but you, you are able to rename your SSIDs so you can change the 2.4 gigahertz, the 5 gigahertz, or, and the 6 gigahertz name, or you can combine them all into one, or you can combine, you know, two of them into one SSID where the third one you can have a different name. So it does give you some options there. Again, it's a very clean, nice interface. There's also a browser interface that you can access via the computer. So generally speaking, it's a pretty clean interface. Now, is it worth getting these? Why or why not? Well, it really depends on your situation. I would say these are ideal for fast internet. Let's just say if you have gigabit and you're going to use wireless backhaul. So because you're gonna get pretty good speeds out of the secondary one, I would say that's a pretty good fit, especially also if you have Wi-Fi 6E devices like the Galaxy S21 Ultra, or the Pixel 6 Pro, and I think moving forward, there will be more and more Wi-Fi 6E devices. Granted, there are very few right now. So in that case, I would say, yeah, it's pretty good. However, if you're gonna do wired backhaul, you don't have Wi-Fi 6E devices, and you, know, you don't care that much about having that amount of crazy range, honestly, you could probably even get something half the price that would be really, really good as well. So it really just depends on your situation. So anyways, smash that subscribe button if you guys enjoyed this video. I'm also gonna compare this to the Orbi RBK E963 and the ASUS ETA in a video because those all are mesh Wi-Fi 6E systems. I'm also gonna do other routers like the, this is the next one that I'm gonna do, the TP-Link AX55. So this is a regular router. And so I'm, I have a whole bunch coming out and a whole bunch more down the road. Anyway, smash that subscribe button. I'll catch you guys in the next one.